All right, guys, this is my 2000 Honda Prelude SH. And I've bought it this year about six months ago. Uh, the intentions were this was a parts car for a car that I have in the garage over there. I have a 98 Prelude that I've been wanting to pull the motor out of this because I blew a rod out of the other one. That one's a 98. This is a, a 2000. So I bought this car. It was a running driving car. It was actually purchased as a parts car. Um, but anyway, so it was a decent running car. And uh, it was missing some stuff. It runs and drives. So what I decided to do is keep it as a running car. But this is the only issue I've been dealing with. So I go to start it up. And it just keeps going like this, and then when it warms up, which I'm not going to let it do, uh, well I could, and then let it cool off so I can uh, show you guys what I'm going to do to fix it, but I was looking on YouTube, and uh, one guy had a suggestion, so everybody says, oh check your cool and check this, check that, and I've checked everything. Still trying to figure this problem out, I'm sure uh, you guys are trying to find this problem as well. But I wanted to show you what mine is doing. And I'm hoping this will uh, pop up into a warm cycle pretty soon with a hot engine. I mean, it's fine because if you sit there and hold it, and holding the RPMs, it stays. It doesn't misfire or anything. But if I let it sit at an idle, this is me off the pedal. just does this at an idle until it starts warming up and then when it warms up it goes crazy we'll go outside Whoa. Still bouncing around, waiting for it to calm down a little bit, but uh, let's see what it does here. I'll hold it a little bit, make sure. I want to say it's been about five minutes or so I've been letting it sit like this. Uh, normally, over the past six months that I've had it normally, uh, the car has been bouncing around. After it does this, it starts just kind of jumping like between here and just kind of does this quick little bup 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 thing, but I'm going to shut this off. So anyways, right now, normally that needle, after it warms up, like if I sit at a red light for a good minute, um, this will sit there and go from what it was doing was jumping from uh, 1500 to 2500, but I opened up what my problem is. I opened it up and I put it back together after I realized I think I could actually fix it. 
after doing some research. So what was happening was that needle was was jumping around maybe 1300 to 1400 RPMs, you know, kind of just jumping around that area uh, within a couple hundred RPMs. Idle should be probably around just under a thousand, like halfway, 500, 400 uh, RPMs. But um, right now, I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do. It's hot, but I'm gonna I'm gonna hose off the engine and kind of go into there. All right, it's been a couple more minutes. Let the cool engine cool off. I actually hosed it down a little bit, so it's a little wet. But um, all right. So what I want to do, the first thing you want to do, the part that you need to get to is down here. So that is called the fast idle air control valve. This is just a normal idle air control valve. I've taken that apart and actually swapped it from my other running car. So now I know that one is good. I could always swap this one, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it out, clean it, and put it back together. I think I actually did the same thing with that one. I, I cleaned that one, I put it all back together. Now I'm gonna clean that one. And uh, to get to it, you obviously need to remove this intake manifold, the, the rubber. So, we're gonna do that. Okay, in theory, it's a lot easier. But um, I've already loosened the screw there, so now it's just a matter of disconnecting hoses. I've actually loosened some of this stuff up. I had it running like this, so I'm just gonna pop it off. Okay, we're gonna tuck that out of the way. Disconnect the, uh, I think that's the PCV, well that's the PCV valve there, but this is the return uh, for the fuel uh, air mixture in the valve cover. It just returns back in to reburn it. And then, I got to take it from the box, I might need to get two hands on this. Okay, I got that one off. Then there's a little quarter inch tube over here. Be careful you don't snap those little plastic things off. You just have to pry it out. I think a couple more things that are in the way. There was a vacuum line that was attached back here. Um, very Things vary on different vehicles, different years, different models. But uh, once you get this loose, take it out. Put it off to the side. And then, next thing you want to do, so okay, tool so far is my drill for the screw that came off the hose, and a rag, wipe things off, it can never hurt to have a rag, um, you can wear mechanics gloves if you want, I was wearing them, and then I took them off. Now, a uh, needle nose my long needle nose to remove hose clamps. Let me get these off. I don't have a fancy tripod for my camera, so bear with me. Let me pop that bad boy off. A good thing of advice is Anytime you remove these hoses, mine are all loose, but every time you remove it, for me, I always undo the clamp, and then I take my pliers and I twist, say this was attached right here, you undo the clamp, push it out of the way, and then you get it, and you just kind of twist it, and it frees it, so then once you free it, you can pull it, but this one I just rotated out of the way, because that connected to there. So I just rotate it out of the way. I don't need to remove it. Now I know where it goes. The next thing I wanted to do, you don't have to do all this stuff, but it's going to make it a little bit easier, is there's a sensor <coughs> for the coil. There's a plug right there. Disconnect that guy. And this one down here for the temperature sensor. And then just move that out of the way. This is also actually connected. There's a little doohickey down here, and that plugs into this bracket. You could leave it in there. I just took it out of the way so I could put that last bolt in. So the bolt you need to get to, there's one. 
this one actually has one and then like right back here in the middle it's like a tri point connection that holds this whole assembly on so actually well, there's one more hose I want to disconnect let's do that real quick I've already disconnected it's loose but I put it back on for video sake again twist it you know make sure it's you see it spinning see how it spins and then pull it off and then tuck that guy out of the way I just tuck it back here and then the harness is in out of the way here but it's in the way there so you could disconnect that and what I used let me go find it you don't need this again this is a uh, to remove cotter pins but you can use anything um, so there's there's a clip here and there's a clip back here so what you could do is pull it in I'm using my middle finger to kind of bend it down. Once you see one side dip down, then push the other side and with your thumb, force it down. Mine caught. Normally you would have two free hands and no fancy videoing. It's, it's almost there. There it goes. Okay, so it's out of the way. All right, and then it goes back and you just snap it straight up. So. When you remove that bolt, this is going to come off, so make sure you don't lose that. When you lose these bolts, you know, try to cradle it with one hand and then ratchet with the other. So, tools, 10 millimeter, short socket, short little stubby guy. Let's see if I have it in the right setting here. No, nope, that's tightening, because I did tighten them back on. And these at the beginning were super tight, so now they're not. I only took it off for the first time today so see I'm cradling it catch it and then I was worried that these bolts were all different I stored them up here but all three are the exact same size same length so yeah let me get this let me uh let me unbolt all these so, okay so let me get to this last one this last one's not too bad to get right now it's about that far in and it's right there. Just try to crack open. I think I can get this one. I'm already seeing. I'm already seeing the housing moving around since I loosened. Let's see. Okay, watch. See that moving? So uh, let me let me remove this piece and get these bolts out. Let me catch this with my other hand before I lose it. Okay, uh, I got that one off. I took the socket. I'm just using the socket in my hands without the ratchet. It's a quarter inch drive. This thing is about to fall. I wanted to get as much detail in here as possible. And now I got the socket in my hand and I'm just spinning it off. You do it however you want. Just showing you my version. All right, so I'm, I'm holding the bolt inside the hole. I got the hole fitting out. I'm gonna put that down, that down. Sorry. All right, so now I'm gonna look inside of there. And so there on the left side is a little white plastic thing. See that right there, right in there? And then inside of the center, obviously it's corroded because I was running straight water in this car. I have other issues. Um, let's fix one at a time here, all right? So what I would recommend is clean that out. Make sure all three of these rings are in there. Now what you want to do next is undo that. I think that is an eight millimeter, but I'm just gonna use my drill. I'm gonna take that off and uh, I'm gonna open it up real quick and show you guys. Okay, so I took the drill, just cracked them open. I'm gonna take these off. Okay, and then the, I did have to kind of force this plate off, but not this time, it just came right off. All right, so we wanna look inside of here. So the, the thing that I saw was a 
person on YouTube saying this backs out, which causes this little spring to move more, which makes your idle higher. So what you want to do is, I actually just took the lid, it wasn't anything fancy. If I could have a tripod here, it'd be awesome, so I could do this two-handed, but I just used that inside of there and I just turned it in and it moved. See how it's rotating? So what you do is you just spin that uh, clockwise, tightens, counterclockwise, this way, backs it out, this way, tightens it down. So what you want to do is tighten it down, but I'm going to take it out, clean it, put it back in, clean that, and then I'll record from there. Okay, that was pretty easy. Uh, it took me a couple more seconds. Um, I just undid it. As you can see, it's right there. I undid the last thread, tipped it over, and here is the assembly. So there, note that there is an O-ring here, and there is an O-ring here. And in my case, that's super hard. Um, quick solution, according to the YouTube guy, is put a little bit of Loctite on there, tighten it down, and that will keep this from needing to be replaced. But in a perfect world, you would replace every single thing you could. So what I would suggest is do what you want to do. Okay, so for my case, I'm going to take it and clean the junk out of it. I would say other words, but I want to keep it PG. Um, clean inside of there, maybe use some brake cleaner, clean everything out, and then uh, I'll reassemble. So I started cleaning this. It's actually two pieces, I don't know if you knew that. Let's see if I can get this focus here. Alright, so this is uh, two pieces here. This one comes out. Aye. This is going to be difficult to record here. But um, what I wanted to get out is uh, I took that out, I cleaned it. Looks a little bit better. I have it cleaned inside of there, shot it with some uh, brake cleaner right here from good old Riley. And then I decided, you know what? There's another side to this. I might as well get in there. Come on, camera. Gotta love it. All right, technology. All right, so what I decided to do is I'm going to take this apart. So I took it and I opened it up and I found surprising more stuff. Look how bad this looks. Since I'm in here, I'm going to clean this out. And uh, I am going to go to town on this. Okay, so I cleaned this, and it actually looks much better, but then I was looking at this little, there's a little second hole right here that goes down all the way to over here, and that was pretty corroded, so I went through my drill bit set, and I found that the 1364th was not too tight. And it went down to maybe halfway and it started catching on what I thought was metal, but it actually ended up being chunks of corrosion. So I went all the way down and it did take out a little bit of metal at the end there. I feel like they would have used one size hole all the way through to the other, but if we can get a little bit of daylight through that, let's see. Anyways, um, it's hard to see because it's at an angle. Well, maybe this way. This way. Yeah, there you go. And I'm trying to figure my camera out. Anyways, so what I would say is if you feel like you want to do that, I did it by hand at first and it worked good until it got stuck. And then I backed it out and then I got my drill. Um, so the drill worked really good, cleaned it out, and now it's a little bit more unchoked. Uh, I'm going to put it all back together, and um, I, I could clean this out a little bit more, um, but I'm happy with this so far. This was much better than it was. 
uh, I'm going to put it back together. Well, there it is again, actually. I did it on the cap as well. Same size hole. 1364ths. Cleaned out that. You can actually see. There's a little bit rained out there, but perfect hole. So I'm going to gonna slap this. Well, clean that. I might hit the brush on that one, get a look as much as I can. Uh, this was as bad as the other one. So hopefully this cleans up as good. All right. That came out really good. So what I would say, if you have a scotch pad like this, ball it up, clean it out. And you could do the little tip right there too. And there you go. More stuff you can do. Okay, so I got everything out here. That is cleaned up. Cleaned in there. Clean that up. I'm just doing the best I can. I'm not going crazy with it. I don't know what all this stuff is, but I'm going to put it all together right now. So, first thing we got to do is put this back on. And then I did notice there's a short screw and a long screw. God damn this camera. All right. Um, so, again, what I would do is the short screw goes on the little flare side and then the long screw goes down inside of there next to this hole that's how i took it apart I and mean, that's how i'm gonna put it back together now hmm pretty sure this was pointing towards me and this block was pointing this way so if you're gonna put it together don't forget but I think you're supposed to put it like that. I'll use my videos for reference for myself as well. But um, I'm pretty sure, 99% sure that it goes this way. And it looks like it does. So I'm going to start putting things together. I say that over and over, but I'm going to do it now. Alright, so I did use the cap. I did use the cap and I stuck it in there and I used it like a key and turned it. Um, it does wear out the edges a little bit, okay? It's not a big deal. But um, initially when you start threading this back down, you do have to push down on that center to get this to kind of engage into that. So um, it worked fine. I got it all the way down. Um, actually, I noticed that it was... Before I was able to see what I thought was like a little diaphragm, but it was just actually the thread sticking out of here. So it was unscrewed pretty far. Um, so I, I did tighten it all the way down and I used that to get it as far as I could. And then I took a flat head and I just cranked it a little bit more and it actually went like maybe a quarter turn more and I felt it bottom out. And uh, before I put it back in there, like I said, you can replace the O-ring, which I would suggest. Or if you don't really want to go to the store at this point, which I don't. Um, this was not that hard to take apart and take too long to do. And I wouldn't mind taking this apart again if it failed again, so it's not a big deal. Um, I hate doing things like this, but this is not horrible. Rather doing this than pull a motor. Anyways, um, this... Uh, I, I used red Loctite. I mean, I don't think you ever really need to adjust this. So putting a dab of like literally an eighth inch circle of red Loctite on those threads is not going to seize it up. It's just going to keep it from turning again on vibration. So I'm okay with that. Um, now the next thing for me to do is put this cap back on and, uh, this o-ring is probably shot, but it never leaked, so who knows, you know, it might not be worth replacing, but now I have to find my little screws. Oh, good thing I put them in the same spot, All right? So put these guys back on. Just be careful. Don't lose them. Preferably don't do it in the engine bay where you could totally lose it. Yeah. 
And don't do it while you're recording. Guaranteed fail there. And luckily these screws are the same. Close your eyes. You didn't see this. You did not see that. Yeah, work on the battery too. Smart. Okay. Perfect. We are set. Cruddy and ready for Honda use. Now, bolt it back up. Oh, what did I do with my socket? There it is. Okay. Warning, do not do things over battery with metal objects. Not seen here, all right. I got all three bolts in, and, and I'm hoping I hand tighten everything first. Make sure they're kind of snug. Now I'm gonna wrench them on. Okay, gotta love Craftsman wrenches, especially the quarter drives. Oh yeah, remember this is a 10 millimeter, so don't lose it. You're gonna need it somewhere else. Okay. I would be done with this right now, but I wanna show you guys how difficult it is to do this. Okay. Feels tight, feels tight. Remember, you're just compressing O rings so you don't need to break things. Put your harness back in, put your other harnesses back in. Don't forget the big guy here. Uh, make sure you put it in the right way. Come on, fingers, work with me. There it goes. That's the sound you want to hear. Come on, rusty water. Work with me too. Alright. Two hands would be nice. Okay, you get the picture. I'm going to do this real quick. All right, the moment of truth. Everything's back together. Sensor's down there. Hose is all plugged in. I don't know why this is there because that won't line up to anything, but maybe it's for, I don't know, whatever. I'll figure it out later. But it wasn't there before and it wasn't gonna be happening later. So whatever you can fix, fix now. Um, oh, I should probably tighten that before I go. And then, I'll get my trusty drill. Not gonna happen one-handed. All right, tighten that up and finish this. Okay, clean up. So, just a quick little review. Screwdriver, AKA drill. Uh, hose clamp tool, wrench for the for the three bolts, uh, brake cleaner, scotch pad, drill bit if needed, uh, replacement parts, whatever you need, and uh, now I'm going to attempt to start this. This is everybody's first time here, mine and yours. I have not started this car since I took it apart. Let's hope this idles. Six, six months in the waiting there. All right. Make sure that everything was clear. All right, cross my fingers. Oh my God. Wow. 
That fixed it. That is so relieving. That's a little bit high of an idle, which I think could be the throttle cable. Or just a dirty intake or whatever the case. But this is totally tolerable. I can totally tolerate it like this. I am excited. That works. That fixed my problem. I'm happy. If anything else happens, I will follow up with you guys. Uh, thanks for sticking around on this video. I hope you guys learned something. I definitely did. This was my first attempt and it worked. I'm happy. It took me uh, probably about half an hour altogether, including recording and learning things to clean. So I'm happy. I'm still watching this idle drop. Let's try this RPM here. Wow, that feels so good. It won't be so embarrassing. So the next thing is to disconnect the battery cable from the ECU to the thing and see if I can reset these. Let's see if I could do that while I'm here. Turn the key off. All right, maybe this video doesn't end. Come on, friend, I have a job for you. Okay, battery cable. This guy right here goes into the fuse box. I disconnect. Pull. Do not ground this. Because this is live. Uh, I'm going to give it a couple minutes here. Oh, this would be so nice if this works too. Like two in one, you know, that'd be awesome. All right, power back. You know what I should probably do? I'm going to carefully get my friend here to help. Okay, you hold that cable there. I'll be back. I'm going to make a jumper real quick. All right. Here goes Mr. Insane. Ground. Not happening. Okay, let's try ground all right hopefully no that probably won't ground the chassis let's see can i can i magically you know maybe that bolt down there you know if i plan this out a little better I'd... anyway so what i'm trying to do is just kind of take the power out of that box there but anyways i think we're good so at this point we can put it back together this should reset it Tighten it back down. Perfect. Put the box together. Take my happy friends here. Oh, I did not take all the tools. I left this guy here. I didn't need that. Okay. Let's continue this venture today. Let's see if this works. All right. That just is a door and a parking brake and I will have to drive this car around and give you another update so let me do that and uh, if nothing goes on I'll be so excited my traction control will be back the SH this is a SH by the way it's a 2000 SH highly modified with nothing in it custom broken deck still works old school anyways um, no Bluetooth upgrade will be in the future when I'm happy with this car but for now this car is seeing my happiness I am excited to, to see this no check engine lights low idle going back to normal I love it Alright, talk to you guys later. Have fun. Bye.